Welcome, everybody, to the Great Lake State of Michigan. Race 21 of 36 in the Twiggy Air Racing Series. It's the two mile oval that has routinely been the source of some of the fastest racing on the stock car calendar. It doesn't matter if it's Cup Series, Grand National Trucks, even the Arca cars pull their biggest speeds here at Michigan International Speedway. I'm Carmen Siena, alongside me, Callie Height. Welcome you back to Friday evening racing here on ABN. Obviously, we weren't here last Friday. We apologize for that at Milwaukee. But now it's crunch time for some of these drivers that want to have a chance at a championship. Merrick Watchorn got his record-breaking 12th win last week at the Milwaukee Mile. 27 in his career in this series so far. But you'll notice... He's not top of the boards right now. Alec Daff on top of the board. Martin Roberg is 37, Sonny Chris Green sitting second fastest, has led most of the practice session so far this evening. Lily Frazier in third, Jacob Elkins fourth, and Watchorn, Greg, David Wright, John Holiday, Lilac Zier, and Eli Sasek in the top 10 in the times sheet so far. Almost 20 cars, will be 21 cars in this field with the addition of Bren Roberts and Nicholas Pressey. And Callie, we've had a chance to kind of look at practice as we go through all of this qualifying coming up here shortly. The speed has definitely shown itself, but it's also shown a little bit more variety. Obviously, Merrick Watchorn, we typically see him dominating. He's not at the top of the standings right now. What does that sort of say about what this race could possibly be with so many new faces at the front of the field? I think long runs are still going to be weighed heavily in uh, Watch One's favor. We know race after race that he has incredible pace over long runs, keeping tires and his tank in check. Um, given the speed uh, of this track and the likelihood for there to be cautions, collisions and mayhem, shorter runs are more likely, shorter runs are potentially going to make or break this race for some drivers. Uh, as we see from the practice runs here, could very well be uh, a very different uh, top three, top five even for this race. Going to be a very enlightening race to say uh, for sure. Obviously, it's been the Merrick Watchorn show most of this season, and now it is legitimately crunch time for drivers that are trying to make a championship bid. This is one of the best chances to sort of dethrone Merrick Watchorn from that win column. We're on race 21. He's won half the season so far. So championship contenders need to really step up and start stepping up consistently at this stage of the season. But as he mentions, long runs, are they going to happen? There's no stages in this series, as we've been pretty well aware of all year long. No stages. It's just straightforward racing. But this will be almost as competitive, probably as frantic as Daytona ha was at the beginning of the season. So with qualifying about to begin, we're going to figure out who's going to try to start this race in the safest spot in the house on pole position. Twenty-one cars set to take part in tonight's event. Top to bottom through this field. Everyone has less than five minutes to make something happen here. First car is on track. Brennan Gregg and Jack Stanley. There's Brennan Gregg, the 18 machine for Ascent Racing. A lot of cars will be coming out pretty fast here. Stock car racing on this two-mile oval has always been a treat especially as this track ages and wears a little bit the bumps as as you go up the track like what Brennan Gregg's running right now will throw the car around but it's still faster for laps like this getting up to speed summer heat I believe this first lap is going to be the lap that counts the most Brennan Gregg's line through turns one and two sort of indicate that that's the case not wanting to worry about building up momentum it's all about getting that first lap under the books as quickly as possible here. He'll be the first one to set a lap time. Jack Stanley also will be setting a lap time, as will Bobby Blowers. And 
Jacob Elkins and Merrick Watchorn. Elkins into the wall during his first run, so that that's, that's, that's a big problem for him. Second run will have to be the, the bank lap, which will be slower. Interestingly, he's not come down pit lane to try to get that resolved because he would otherwise just get a reset there. Ray goes up the board ahead of Blowers and Stanley. See how the heavy hitters hit here. Pressy goes up to P2. Buchanan fourth. Watch one goes only third fast on that opening lap. Again, keep in mind, Daffin was top of the board in practice. Then it was Roberg who was hot on the immediate pace for most of the session. So the 48 and the 37, where did they land? Second lap in the books, Brennan Gregg. Does he improve? Does he need to improve? He does. 39.36. I had yeah, a match on now. Watch on going for his uh, to complete his second lap. He needs to improve. He's coming down to seventh place. Uh, he does improve by one thousandth. Does not improve on the board. Currently running seventh Make after his eight. qualifying run. Martin eighth. Roberg. Drop, drop, dropping fast. Poor showing for Watch on in his qualifying run. Yeah, Ninth this is now. Fraser This will be Watchorn's worst qualifying performance on an oval all year as Roberg steps it out sideways out of turn two. This will probably kill his lap. Alec Daffin on top of the board with 39.21. Lilac here goes front row. Very good running from that forward. Chevy Ford, Toyota all top three. And Roberg pushing a little bit too hard, clipped the wall. This lap now officially done. We'll move to Matt Wilson. Number three machine. Wilson, David Wright, Josh Jernigan, John Holiday, and Bryn Roberts yet to set lap times in this session. I believe David Wright has a penalty to be serving, so he will not be setting a qualifying time tonight. He'll start from the back of the field. Matt Wilson, however, on his first lap, bring a throwback to Lake Dale Earnhardt. Very loose out of that corner. It's all about making this. It, it, you're, you're making the tires scream as they're as they're quickly oh. getting up the temperatures, and that's what makes that first lap so sketchy. But this second lap should be interesting for Matthew Wilson. First lap, only he 16 has a lot fastest. to gain. A lot to gain. A 40.09 on his first lap. Second lap, loose out of two. Will not be able to improve if I were to put any money on it. I think he can still improve. I don't think he's going to be anywhere near the front of the field. And I think it's all because of how low he's running in the corners. He's running across that seam. And for those that watched Champ Car last year, especially at the races at Fontana, those seams are deadly. Once you run rubber mm. across those rubber seams, it's a completely different temperature compared to the rest of the, the asphalt. Marginal improvements by two tenths. Jumps up past Pillar into 15th position. Yeah. But, but still very marginal improvements. So now we have Watchhorn very securely in... Does anyone else have to go? Yeah, that's, I think everyone who's run now. So Watchhorn, 11th place. Not a fantastic start to the night. Uh, Pressy, as we know, can be quick in some of the uh, older cars. Ninth position. This is going to be very interesting to see how this race sort of plays out. And we'll kind of break it down for everyone here. 100 laps, 200 miles, 2 mile oval. Pretty simple math makes it easy for everyone here watching at home. For everyone tuning in, again, this is race 21 of 36 on Carmen Siena alongside me, Callie Height, for tonight's race. This is what the drivers are looking at here this evening. 78 degrees, the air temp, as is typically tradition, but it's all about that track temperature, 119 degrees on track here this evening. Two mile an hour winds will make it easier. It means the drivers are probably going to be side drafting a little bit more because they're they're able to they have that stability too especially out of turns two and turn four when you see everyone dive down below the white line and use the apron it's a very interesting field makeup tonight obviously we were kind of expecting a little bit of shake up with how competitive this race is but i don't think we were expecting it to be shaken up this much it's alec daffin and lilac Zier at the front of the field Brennan Gregg and Maurice Gamillion in row two. The Matt Dyer and Martin Roberg in row three. Roberg, who seems certain to have the pace for pole position, had two subpar laps to his own admission there, that second lap being completely invalidated. 
He'll start in row three, though. He's still best starting position in the series so far. Louis Frazier, we've only seen her once before. Here's our second time seeing Frazier on the on the track. That number 13 car starts in seventh place alongside Jacob Elkins. Nick Pressey, the ABN Avon Box Cup Series podium finisher and ABN Champ Car Race winner, starts in row five alongside Eli Sasek, who qualified yesterday for the Firecracker 400. Merrick Watchorn, worst qualifying performance for him on an oval, 11th place, as we mentioned there, alongside Bobby Blowers, who will start in row number six. A little bit further down the order here, 21 cars in this field as we get ready to go. John Holiday, RJ Buchanan in row seven, Matt Wilson, Greg Pillar, row eight, row nine is Jack Stanley and Casey Ellis, then David Wright and Josh Jernigan in row 10. Bryn Roberts, making his first start of the season, will join the back of the field. Now we have we have some of the more aggressive drivers and the fastest drivers here tonight, midfield. We have some of the uh, maybe only one of them really. We have Lila Zier up front, as we know Lila likes to run a more conservative race, run those long runs and take advantages where they are opened up to her. I predict, I suspect she will fall back quickly um, over the first few laps of this race, partially uh, through design, partially not have it quite having the pace from these other cars i don't think she doesn't usually have the the fight in her that other cars do um trying to fight for those uh top spots during the opening stages of a race and uh, I, I think we could see pressy and watch on in those top five top six spots before the first year run is up it's going to be a very interesting challenge to say the least to see how this all starts off this track is wide four lanes you can really run all the way around you can run top you can run bottom lane you can run literally from safer barrier to the apron on the front straightaway and drivers especially early on is going to are going to make that decision talk about like you're trying to drop back from second place that's falling through the storm that's not falling from the center to the outer rim of this hurricane that's going completely in through the hurricane for zero so we'll see how aggressive she is here for sure see if she bucks that trend tonight as they come out of turn four through the restart zone the green flag flies and we're racing for the great lakes 200. a little bump from the 44 to zero there on the outside moving to the inside not have the momentum for that run. Is there still securely in third position? We have, oh, I think that Fraser trying to make moves on the inside line very early on. Roberg just tagged the wall, that 37 machine, as he did in qualifying, tagged it with that right rear quarter panel and immediately had to shoot down below Nick Pressy. Not what he wanted to do. March one already up two spots, that 91 trying to move up quickly. Sitting in traffic. We also a Porsche in qualified, but now four spots up in 11th place. Yeah, Matt Wilson there. Make that five spots for that number three machine as he stays on the bottom as Martin Roberg sinks like an anchor. Oh, and Roberg just got touched and hey, went sideways. Ooh. And that was a phenomenal save by the 37, who was completely perpendicular to the track. I bet he's wishing he hadn't saved it. Now he's at the back with a long way to go. Devil's Advocate, if that's how aggressive they are already on lap two, maybe it's safer to be back there and let them wreck each other. Some of these cars have a long way to go from where they want to finish this race. Absolutely. Luke Frazier up to the fourth spot, getting around the seven of Matt Dyer. As she Jeff has and pace. Leads. She has pace, but she's pushing those tires way too hard, way too early. She, she's gonna, you know, she's gonna suffer that fall off very soon if she's pushing like this. Watch Horn pass Pressy on the inside. They have the momentum to make the move stick. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, he does. And Watch Horn pushing a lot here. Spots now into seventh. Yeah, Watch Horn's pushing a lot here too, just as much as Frazier's pushing to try to get positions here. Definitely not a tire-friendly strategy at all, running that bottom lane like that. Bachorn hogging that 
that seam separating the very bottom of the track from that middle lane. As Watchorn attacks, or actually it's on the, the defense from Pressy now as Pressy tries to get a position back. If these two can maintain pace with one another during this race, it'll be a fun race to watch. We know that during these uh, later runs, if the if the caution can play out, Pressy can have immense pace to uh, charge the field. Pressy's another one that loves those oddball strategy calls, and he makes them work more often than not. So that's going to be an interesting strategy, a, 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 a mixing pot of, of talent here from across the avian spectrum. Obviously some from open wheel, obviously some that have been stock car through and through. A couple of drivers yeah. from the dirt racing side of things. And Nicholas Pressy is one of those drivers you may describe as the wreckers or checkers type. Yeah, yeah. that is a guarantee there. Right now, Watchorn pulling away from Pressy here, but still has a little bit to go before he gets to the back of Matt Dyer. Single file for the first nine cars. You have to look back towards Elkins, who's under threat from that three of Matt Wilson. And he's gonna make a move on Blowers there, the 34. Try to move forward a spot. No, Sasek in 12th there behind Wilson, Buchanan in 13th, Jack Stanley in 14th place. And Watch Hall making a move on Dyer, past Dyer through turn two, now up six positions into the fifth position spot. Within seven laps of this race, Watch Hall has climbed six positions and is in the top five. Now we know he has the pace, we know that Watchcon has the ability to drive this car as fast as he needs it to go. But he doesn't usually, he's not usually required to push his tires as hard as usual. Usually he qualifies, you know, within the top three and he will, he will sail away with a c conservative tire usage. But having to push his car as hard as he is in these opening stages, if this run goes green, or this run goes long, he could suffer the consequences later in the run. Yeah, Watchorn's in a position he's not often in on these ovals. This is something we see, we see, we see him in occasionally on the road courses. But you are 100% correct on that. Like he is right now in, in a bit of a bit of an unenviable position. Obviously, having to fight from behind the first time in a while we've seen him in this position. So far, he's sitting up in the top five. He's gotten around Matt Dyer. As... He's trying to make the passes go. He try, he, sorry, he's trying to catch up and pass both Frazier and Zia. Going for Zia now on the inside of two. Pass her. And I th yeah, he's made, the, he's made that run stick. Going again uh, into three for Frazier. Trying to make that podium spot within lap 10. I don't... Oh, does he have the run? Yeah, he, I think he has, yeah, he's got the run. He's got that move, move done now into out of four. So 10 laps, 10 laps through, Watchhorn into third position. Fantastic opening stage of this race, but mm, if I was him, I would now, I would now sit tight, let those tires, tires cool, let the temperatures drop, and just run the race until the next caution, next, you know, fuel run, or whatever the case may be, until the next time comes where he can get new tires. He's made his moves. The next cars ahead are a second, a second and a half to push and make that move, to make those moves stick, without draft. Yeah, he's gonna push the car too hard. He needs to just sit back for a while and bide his time. This is, it's gonna be an interesting sort of situation. Obviously, we're only a 10th of the way through this race now with Alec Daffin leading Burning Greg at the front of the field. Watchhorn, the hardest part of Watchhorn's job is over. As you mentioned, he could easily just kind of sit back and sort of just manage the pace now. Or if he thinks that he's able to save Tyrell better than Greg and, and Daffin, he can try to close in a little bit more. Or ideally, if Daffin and Greg are battling, they'll just fall to him. That's going to be the interesting sort of development to follow. How much does Greg push here to try to get to the race lead early on? 
versus just kind of sitting back behind Daffin and, and and sort of play rear gunner at the moment. Because right now, as as these two work together, it really kind of adds a bit of a buffer from Watchorn. But Watchorn's still gaining a little bit of time here. 1.1 the gap now between second and third. And Fraser and Zier still going at it there for fourth now. Personally, if I was in the position of Greg, I would I would just sit behind him for as long as I can. I would not try and interfere with his pace, my pace. I would want to make try and maintain as much distance from that third place car as I possibly can, because we know if he catches up, it is a much harder job that we don't want to deal with. Now going through the field, we have Frazier three up, Zier three down. So they have they have swapped Frazier fourth, Zier fifth. Uh, Pressy only up two from his original side position. Gamillion is down four. Unusual showing from him. The uh, that team hasn't had a great start to the weekend. Obviously, okay. also I believe they're missing one car this week too. Uh, they are missing that. Yeah, the 19 of Patrick Hernandez not present tonight. Wilson was up five positions earlier in the run. Now he's down to three. Uh, Stanley up three. He usually made some good runs in the early race, but is more often than not, he is involved in one thing or another and finishes far below his potential and his pace. And that's battling David Wright for that 14th spot. David Wright of five mm -hmm. spots, uh, mostly thanks to the... Uh... The misfortune of Martin Roberg, who is the biggest loser so far in the opening stanza, down 11 spots so far in this race as he tries to pick off Josh Jernigan in that 40 machine. Watch Horn still pushing, still putting in the laps, trying to catch up to those front runners. Pushing less so now as the tires wear off, but the gap is closing. Likewise, I like Zier struggling a lot here. Mm. Lost a spot to Dyer, now losing a spot to Pressy here. I think maybe she pushed too hard in those early runs to try and maintain her good starting position and just burnt it, up, burnt it up. She did the opposite of what she usually does. Yeah, that's kind of what, mm. I was, what I was wondering with her starting on the front row. Obviously, you made the assumption that she might just drop back. She may, she's going to drop back, not by her own volition, I don't think, though. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely kind of, a, a judgment error on, on this one. Maybe saw red and went a little too hard. Her best qualifying position so far in this series came in today's race. Second place for her. First time on the front row in one of these events. But now she battling is with a, the Falcons. She's a regular... I wouldn't say regular, she, she is a frequent podium finisher. She's had a few podium finishes here um, later in the season. Um, what's her best finish here, third or second? I believe she's gotten a couple of thirds here. We'll pull it up here. She got two career champ car race wins here. She's got a career best finish of third. She's done it twice. So she definitely, she has the, she has the potential and the pace to put the car on at least the third third step, if the race can present her with an opportunity to do so. I I don't think this will be one of those races. She's just been going backwards the entire race so far. And uh, regardless of her pace, that kind of thing will mess with you. It'll mess with your confidence. And well, you need it. Right now, and that's sort of interesting because Zier is typically the closer, as we mentioned there. This is not game over for her. I, I think I think a podium still in reach, especially when you look at how frantic this battling is right now. I think very much. I think that the first pit stop cycle is going to give her a chance to really reset. That reset button that everyone's going to be hitting on that pit stop cycle is going to be vital to correcting the ship here. For Zier, still very possible to get to the, the, the podium positions right now, as difficult as it is, because Brennan Gregg and Alec Daffin and Merrick Watchman are going to duke it out 
significantly at the front of the field. They're all three together now. We have some uh, intense fighting in, uh, in the midfield with, with uh, Pressy and Elkins. Out of two, last lap, Pressy went high, chopped the nose off of Elkins. Elkins not happy over the radio. Pressy now going for an inside move on Frazier over on the back stretch. Past Frazier, coming into three. And there's going to be a little bit of contact there between Frazier and Pressy, just a little bit. The slightest of margins, netcode, being very friendly to those two there. Yeah. But if Pressy he keeps making moves like that, he will live to regret it. But Pressy moving forward now, later into the stage, so that he saved a little bit of those tires early on. But up at the front of the field, Vernon Gregg leads ahead of Alec Daffin and Merrick Watchorn. Watchorn closing in significantly. At 91, firmly in the battle for the race lead after starting 11th place in this race. Very odd Watch ball starting has, Which one has been laying laps down roughly half a tenth to a tenth quicker? than his current uh, podium spot competitors. Inside of one, makes the move stick, has it done, he's gonna keep on going now. You know, he is hungry for ultimately uh, the, the the position that his pace deserves, the top, the top spot. He, he's always, always in that fight. And how he wants to go for it, he wants to make that spot his. Ideally, if he can get it done before the fuel stop, and as long as he hasn't, burnt off his tires too much. I think this will be, uh, he'll, he'll be in a very good position now for the rest of the race. 20, 20, 22 laps down, down now, we have 80, we have 79 to go. I'm not sure what the window looks like here, given the size of the track. We're usually looking at 30 to 40 laps on, a, on an intermediate. Mm, maybe, what, maybe perhaps 28 to 32 laps on this track. I think, I think it's a very close three-stop race right now. Just as assuming things, because mm. I'm assuming that they can go longer than 25. But based on the pace that they're in right now, they're not worried about fuel saving to reach a number. It seems to me like it's a pretty easy three-stop race. I don't think anyone's going to try to make it a two-stop race, which means that they can't make it a 34. So I'm willing to bet, I think the window's probably closer to about 30 laps. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet that I, between 26 and 30 laps, we'll kind of put that window there sort of as a, a soft estimate because I don't think it's a two-stop race because that's 34 and then 68. And I don't think they can go that far on these on this tank of fuel, especially as, as flat as they've been going. As Merrick Launchhorn just like that, got to the race lead. Brennan Gray gonna fight him back for it though. Merrick Watchman leads that lap. Brennan, oh, nearly yeah. contact, but Brennan, Brennan into T1. Taking the inside, trying to keep ahead of Watchman. Watchman having the momentum, maintaining race lead. Daffin going behind Watchman, passing Greg with ease. Now he needs the tires to make it step on the outside. Wow, not doesn't. a chance. Well, I think I think Daffin might is coming down pit lane. So it's a it's a, definitely a three stop race. It could be a little bit more tricky as a three stop race. That's lap twenty five. That's fifty seventy five. Oh, that is a concern. Oh, maybe not. Daffin went over the uh, the pit cone at 55 miles an hour on a track with a... F oh, no, that is the limit. Oh, just... Yeah, he came in really hot. I wasn't sure if he had the penalty or not. Daffin is, is pretty well renowned for cutting it close. Sometimes he stepped over it uh, earlier this season. A couple times he got a speeding penalty. But put it under control there. We'll double check to make sure that he's not being held there. He had a 15 second pit stop. A little slower than normal. 14 second pit stop, typically at the range here. So a second slower than normal. But Alec Daffin out, no penalty there. As the leaders continue to go on, trying to go as far as they can on this tank of fuel. 
before their pit stop. Alec Daffin thinking undercut. As there's that 48 coming out right in front of the race leaders. Still on the lead lap, importantly. In case one of those tricky yellows does come out, he will not be stuck a lap down. Very close, though. A 39.4 second stop for Daffin on a 40, currently 41 second lap. Very, very close. And those last ones are going to be interesting to follow. You can make these uh, green flag runs work without going laps down, so long as you get it just right. Any issues and you're going to be a lap down. Any, any cautions following that pit and you're in trouble. So we currently have Pressy leading the, uh, the midfield pack, running third as of Daffin's uh, undercut stop. Um, four seconds behind uh, the cars of Brennan Gregg and Merrick Watchhorn. Pressy is running ahead, comfortably ahead of the cars behind him, but I, he's not quite losing them yet. One, two, three, four, five cars in that midfield. Six, seven cars in that midfield yeah, fight say, with him. midfield was a little bit stacked. Martin Rover, 37, it's... a lap down, mm -hmm. but on fresh tires getting through it. This will definitely be the more interesting race of uh, tonight. This uh, midfield top five. These, these top five spots are what they're going to be fighting over. At the current pace, Presti definitely has one of those spots secured. The rest of the cars, Lily Frazier, Lilac Zier, J Jacob Elkins, uh, Maurice Chameleon are, are frequent fast contenders. These are the cars that will be running for that fifth and final top five spot tonight. So long as everything goes their way. Running aboard with Frazier. Trying to chase down that Oppressi and obviously Rober going through on fresh tires. Not really a factor in this right now. Very interesting that Daffin pit on lap 24. No one else is pit yet as we approach lap 30. They're very interesting. If they can make it to 33 at the two stop. And if, but surely that's, that, that shouldn't be the case. Otherwise, why would Daffin have pitted? Why would he have put himself, sorry, if you can get the, if you can get the 33, it's a two stop. But it, then that would beg the question, why didn't Daffin stay out? Because now he's on a three stop. Unless they can go well beyond 33. Only way that it makes sense though, so 20, been on 24. So that leaves 76 laps. You'd have to go, that's almost, 37 laps to split it in half. If you're doing a two-stop race still, if you're dapping. I'm right on board with Frazier here for a full lap. Not really getting anywhere, however, compared to that of Pressy, who keeps pulling right, away. Side and by side with Frazier. Frazier having the run over the, uh, over the finish line. Doesn't have the tires and have the momentum to make that pass stick. Frazier still comfortably, I wouldn't say comfortably, but as of that corner, securely in four position still. But the, the, this, this midfield battle, these one, two, three, four, five, six cars, they are they are door to door. They are bumper to bumper. It is a constant battle for these positions here. And it's, it's helped out people like Zier, who we was we said were falling back earlier. But Zier fell back as slow as night. But now back up in the top seven That's so far. definitely stabilized. Yeah. But Zier and Gamillion both look... We have Sasek in the pits. That's a 71 car in the pits on lap 31. Very important to notion there. Can they make it to 33? And caution's out. Caution's out. And it is for... A huge crash in that mid-pack that we were talking about. Jacob Elkins is in it. Looks like Blowers is in it and Frazier's in it. Frazier around backwards. Oh, dear. Oh, no. That is not a good event. Oh, yeah. That's, uh... What happened to Willie Frazier and company? And, oh, this is side-by-side out of turn two between Frazier and Elkins. So what we have here is side by side and one and two. Frazier going wide, 
bad tires just staying on the throttle. They did not let off the throttle and just rode up into the into the side of the number nine car. Shoving Elkins into the wall there. Elkins getting a solid tap from the rear by Dyer. Flowers got Zia, a piece of it as well. Yeah, Zia taking a piece of that. Oh, actually, there might be a net code hit. Um, Bobby Blowers taking a good hit. And Maurice Gamillion getting through absolutely clean. So we have so we have some big winners and some big losers from this one. Over the radio, Daffin uh, unhappy with his uh, pit call, no longer working out. Frazier obviously down all the way to the end of the end of the uh end of the field there still able to drive back into the pits to uh collect repairs but all that hard work all that solid running no longer worth jack eli sasek this is going to be interesting for sasek because sasek went a lap down because he had pit right as the caution came out so he is going to get a wave around here. Martin Roberg got the free pass position. He was the first car a lap down. Eli Sasek will get a free pass. We we Greg out the pit first, followed by Watchhorn, Pressy, Dyer, and Zier for our car in top five. So Lilac now on fresh tires, only three down from her starting position. We have Merrick up nine and Pressy up six. Both in very good position now following this caution and this uh, end of the first run of the race. We still don't know what the limits of this fuel tank are. We think we were approaching it, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting. We're definitely approaching it. David right up 11 spots. KCL is up 8. Some of our biggest gainers there so far. I think... I think we're definitely looking at one more stop now. I think this, this is a one-stop race, yeah. yeah. Because we're under caution right now. And this would have been the lap everyone would need to, to pit on to make it to lap 67 68 to make it on one more stop anyway under green and now they're saving fuel so i think we're very close if if that is the concern right now i think that we are very close to just have needing one more stop this is becoming a little bit more pivotal um especially and it's gonna be falling in the hands of those that can that can tire save a little bit more now so it hurts Daffin because Daffin is he's had his gamble didn't pay off. He restarts this race in 11th. The number one of right has had big wins from this caution up now 11 spots into the eighth position. Casey, that's early, another big gamble. Early, early, early positions from the uh, the Roberg incident with him still 11 down in 17th place. Um, the incident we just had with uh, Frazier. Uh, Sa no, not Sasek, um, Elkins, Gamillion, Zier, Dyer, these blowers, these cars all involved. Right staying ahead of some of them, dropping behind some of them still. But 11 spots up, in the 8th position, a good good position to be in following the the next uh, the next run of this race. And David Wright still looking for his first win in this series. He's in a really good spot to make it happen. On the outside lane where you can kind of let it rip on this opening couple laps. While these tires are still cold, we'll see what he can do. 19 cars still running, all of them on the lead lap. Eli Sasek sitting at the very tail end of the field, having to use a, uh, a wave round to get back on the lead lap. But he is still good to go. Brennan Gregg and Merrick Wachuarn at the front of the field. Pace car is in pit lane as they go through the restart zone. Green flag is in the air and away we go. Back underway at Michigan. And a poor restart by somebody further back. Emilia had a poor start, dropped one position already down to eighth position, right up to seventh. Casey Ellis had a bad restart. We started this race up in the 11th position, or actually up in 10th. Did not start in the right gear, and already down to 13th. Daffin on a hard charge, trying to, ooh, 
Uh, passed Billy now on the front stretch. Nearly getting pinned in the wall. Not passed. I didn't have the momentum to make it run, to make it work. Yeah, Davin's trying to send down the outside lane. It's a lane that's pretty well clear at the moment. Got through around Gamillion, trying to get around Flowers now. Stop but, behind right. Yeah. Has the space. I want to now take right into T3. Davin, left, right, and center. Charging through this field, goes round right and Blowers now looking at the back of the Lilac Zeers machine. Watch one already passed uh, the 18 of uh, Ren and Greg. Now, lead once more, leading this race. Now, with fresh tires, a full tank, and he can just do what he's best at. Oh, Daffin oh, got turned by Zeer! turned by Zeer! And around, around goes Daffin. We were riding on board with Daffin as he was trying to go through the field. Oh, I see. And around he went. And I have a strong inclination to believe this may be a very similar incident to what we saw on the first caution of the race. We'll go back and look at it to make sure. This is a little bit further back than we want it to be here. Again, you're looking at 4889 of Daffin and Zier. Zoom out a little bit. Actually, we'll zoom out a little bit more here. Try to get a decent look at it. Oh no, Zier came down on the Daffin. I, I, looking at it closely, I think it's a bit of A and a bit of B. I think Daffin came up with the slightest touch. Zier. Off the throttle, loose out of the corner a tiny bit. Had a, a little bit of rotation in the car. And I think, ultimately, mm, I don't know. It, it's very close. Both cars are... Mm... No, looking at it again, yeah. Definitely, uh, Zia just uh, a little bit of rotation out of the corner. Getting loose, get back on the throttle. Uh, it's definitely not clear from that pass. And just getting the turn from uh, Zia there. Very marginal, very, very easy to do. Very, very, the smallest amount of contact. And everyone scrambled there. Very good job by everyone avoiding that. That was very close. I believe that was by RG Pekin who got close. So Alec Daffin coming back down pit lane. This is going to be wow. for additional oh. repairs. The pole sitter having a rough go of it. All that work he just did. Now he has to do it again. Yeah, it's going to be a lot harder to do now too with that left side crumpled in. Now let me check. Watchorn and Greg will be at the front of the field. Watchorn will control this restart this time. Brennan Greg had to control the restart last time around. Bressy in third, Elkins in fourth. Matt Dyer will be in fifth place. And if there was any concerns about fuel and making it on just one more stop, I think those concerns have been put to bed. Mm -hmm, definitely. I, the, the drivers now have very much free reign of when they pit next. Yeah, 100%. So there's, there's no more strategy. It's how you feel. It's uh, what your tires are feeling. If you, if you burn them up early, and you feel like you have to pit and you play it safe for the remainder of the race, that is an open strategy. If you want to run that tank dry and run your tires as little as you can and a push for the last stint, you have the option too. Some of these drivers will go for option number one, and many of these drivers will go for option number two, depending on where you are in the field, depending on what kind of pace you have in those conditions. Um, some cars that have perhaps had a rough go of it today, a few times in the wall, may need to take option one for a significant por portion of the uh, next green run. The likes of Daffin come to mind. All the way at the back now, at the back, very back of the field, because on that green run, or sorry, on that on that last restart, every car was in the lead lap, so there are no lucky dogs for uh, Daffin to contest with, or be in front of, rather. He's at the very back with 
everything to gain and currently nothing to lose. Yeah, he's going to have to start. As, as much as it's going to be interesting to say, because we typically don't have to worry about saying this, it has to be elbows out now for Daffin, and he was already pretty elbows out to begin mm. with. Now it's uh, a bit of take no prisoners approach now. It's, it's how this thing has escalated for Daffin. While well, Britton Gray enjoys the uh, the spoils of being out of harm's way so far. Our top five so far are a mix of cars that have been there all race or have charged their way up. Watchhorn, Elkings, Pressy. They started five positions back from their current positions, 10 positions back from their current positions. Uh, Greg is one up from his current position and Dyer is exactly where he started. Coming into lap 42, on the green, 59 to go. Green flag in the air and away we go. Second restart of the night. And a blistering restart by Watchorn. Completing the first half of this run, Daffin is already up um, five positions from his uh, starting position in this uh, run. Still 13 down from where he started, not quite what he wants to see, with uh, just shy of 60 to go. Daffin already charging through though. Just as you were saying that he gained two spots on Roberg and Sasek. It'd be very entertaining to see how that 48 goes through as obviously everyone side by side still most of the way through. Three car battle for the lead. It's Watchorn, Greg, and Elkins with Nick Pressy in fourth. Wouldn't he love to play spoiler? Bessie very much playing a best of the rest tonight. Much like our first run tonight, he is not in any way in contention for the podium three, but he is far clear of the midfield behind him. Daffin now into the top 10. Once again. See, in, in these fields we have where there is a varying level of skill uh, from top to bottom, you know, getting through the first 10, 15 cars for someone like Daffin will be a complete breeze. Getting through those top five cars, getting back to the top three, Getting that race lead, that is a much, much harder challenge, especially on tires that have taken a beating. What he'll need ultimately is a caution that he isn't involved in once he gets to around uh, fifth or sixth. Yeah. See how wide open this track is. Cars running all four lanes of the track. Daffin working on Blowers for 8th place. Frazier a block that from Frazier there. Not necessarily a block, but a car in the way for Daffin. And that's significant because the, the more cars you have to deal with to take in at that space, the slower he gets in this traffic. And obviously Daffin doesn't really get much of a choice right now because he's side by side with Blowers. The lane he runs kind of protected is, is sort of determined by where Blowers puts his car. And what Daffin needs right now, he needs someone that's also down there on the straightaway so he can get some draft. 
Because right now he's getting all the cons and none of the pros. All the cons being in the corners when you have to deal with that dirty air. Gets around Blower, but it took three laps to do it. <laughs> 